It's a great question, and I know that it's a question that a lot of people have uh, wondered about. What does the Bible say about divorce and remarriage? Uh, the first thing that I want everybody to know is whatever has happened in your life prior to coming to Christ is under the blood. We sang about that, the blood, that it washes away our sins. So <clears throat> whether it's divorce or adultery or any any. Thing that maybe shame tries to attach itself to you about. If it was before Christ, and even after Christ, there's forgiveness. Uh, it's under the blood. Uh, and divorce is not the unpardonable sin, but there are, the Bible does give us parameters about divorce. Jesus in Matthew chapter 19 talks about the divorce, and he says, uh, I'm looking in chapter 19 here, is it lawful for one to divorce one's wife for any cause? This is what they asked him. And he said, have you not read that he who created them from the beginning made them male and female? And he said, therefore, a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two but one. What therefore God has joined together, let no one separate. It's important to understand in marriage, it's a covenant. It's not two people joining themselves, it's God joining them. And it says, and they said to him, why then did Moses command one to give a certificate of divorce to send her away? Under Moses, under the Old Testament law and the way that the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees functioned, you could divorce your wife for any reason whatsoever. If you came home and you didn't like what she made for dinner, you could divorce her. Just write her a certificate, boot her out. Under Judaism, prior to uh, early centuries, a woman could not divorce her husband, but a man could divorce his wife. So it left a woman in a very vulnerable economic uh, and family dynamic in a family place. So this is what Jesus is talking to. In verse eight, he said, he said to them, the reason why Moses allowed you to divorce your wife is because of the hardness of your heart. And Moses allowed you to divorce your wives, but from the beginning, it was not so. In other words, that's not God's original intent. Verse number nine, he says, and I say to you, whoever divorces his wife, and I would reverse it and say, or whoever divorces their husband, because now both can in our culture, whoever except for sexual immorality and marries another commits adultery. So this is Jesus's words to his followers. So Divorce, or marriage is a covenant that God brings two people together and he makes them one in his sight. Are there reasons for divorce? Yes. The Bible gives, I believe, three parameters for divorce. Number one is sexual immorality or adultery. It doesn't mean you have to divorce, but when there is sexual immorality or adultery that takes place in the marriage, you are justified in divorcing your spouse. If if, you just, if it's irreconcilable, if there's not repentance, if you don't feel like you can go on, you're justified in that. Second is what's called the Pauline exception. And this is in the book of 1 Corinthians. I won't turn there for sake of time, but Paul's talking to believers and he's talking about marriage. And he says, if you are a believer, a Christian, and your spouse is an unbeliever and they leave you, he says, then you are free to remarry. Now, what he's talking about is abandonment. Okay, and so if you are married and your spouse leaves you or abandons you and you do everything that you can to reconcile that marriage and they just are like, no, I'm done, I don't want, and they divorce you because we're living in a no fault, no fault or default, default, no fault uh, divorce culture. Paul's saying you're not bound any longer, that you are free to then remarry, but only remember to marry in the Lord. Okay, and the third exception is not explicitly stated, but I believe it is, uh, it is, it's woven through the pages of scripture, is when there is uh, ongoing physical abuse. When there is abuse and you are not safe, and here's why, because in Ephesians 5, Paul gives commands to the husband. He says, no one has ever hated his own body, but he loves it and he cherishes it and he protects it. And so when a, when a husband or a wife does not honor that, that other individual, and they threaten them, or they physically hurt them, and there's not, there, there's not intervention and repentance, and a person is not safe, and they need to get out of the house. They need to be safe. And then if that spouse refuses to get help, refuses to change, I believe that for, this, for the safety of children, for the safety of women, and it's 99% of the time it's women, 
uh, I believe that divorce is justified for two reasons. Because number one, you're not loving your wife as your own body. And number two, you're acting like an unbeliever and you put them into a, a very difficult situation. Now, what about Christians, two Christians who are married and then they get a divorce? Well, the Bible says you shouldn't. And the Bible says that you should not remarry. You should not remarry. You should stay. You should either work out your marriage or you should be separated for a period of time, get counseling, and you need to lean into it and you need to stay committed to it. Okay, well, Pastor Lee, I was a Christian and my spouse was a Christian and we got divorced and now we're married to other people. Well, what you need to do is you need to repent of what you did before and you need to trust God to honor the marriage that you're in right now. God's not gonna dissolve that marriage. Divorce is not the unpardonable sin. So when we recognize what we did was outside of God's will for us, what's our response? It's not to live under condemnation or shame, it's to repent and say, God, now from this day forward, I'm gonna do the very best that I can. And an interesting story is David in the Old Testament with Bathsheba. He murdered her husband, committed adultery with her, brought judgment on the nation as a result of that, but eventually he marries Bathsheba. Bathsheba and him have a son named Solomon. And when you read Matthew chapter one, and it gives the genealogy of Jesus Christ, you'll see Bathsheba in there. But also listed, Bathsheba is still lift, listed as Uriah's wife. It's interesting. But yet somehow God was able to use it and bring redemption through it. So uh, that's what the Bible has to say about divorce and remarriage. So what do you feel like in our church culture, I won't say like in worldly culture, but in church culture, what are reasons that have become normalized or become accepted for divorce that the Bible would say, actually, that's not acceptable? But maybe the church has said, well, that's okay. You can actually get divorced for that reason. Well, you can see a correlation from the 60s when divorce laws began to change and divorce in the church. We have followed the pattern of culture. That's when, that's when you had the introduction of um, no-fault divorce where you can get a divorce for no reason whatsoever. Uh, in our culture, we, vary, we view marriage as a contract between two people. But God sees it as a covenant. It's cut in blood. Uh, it is sealed in. Um, it is it is sealed physically as well as with vows and spiritually because God is involved. It is God, you, and your husband or your wife. That is that is a divine covenant. And God says, "What God has brought together, let no man divide." Okay, so with very few exceptions. But culture says it's a contract. You can make a contract. You get married, and then you can get divorced, and you can get remarried, try it out. We even have what are called starter marriages now. That's huge right now among younger generations where they get married uh, very young, try it out, get divorced, but they find their real lifelong marriage later on. Uh, it's, a, it's a disposable culture. And what we have done is we've created instability in the nuclear family to where marriage really isn't valued. We, what marriage has become in our culture is an extension of high school, a boyfriend, girlfriend. As long as we feel love, then we're going together, we're going steady, but then we break up and then we try something else. And what that has done is it has destabilized, not just our children, but it's destabilized each other because we no longer have commitments uh, that we keep even when we don't feel like it. Um, do you want to say something, Pat? <laughs> I, I just saw the microphone move. I'm like, yeah, okay. Yeah. No, I, just so true that, you know, like Lee and I have been married 32 years, so people be like, <clears throat> like, oh my gosh, 32 years, how have you done that? And I sometimes I'll be like, that to me is just sad. Like, you could do it too, you know what I mean? Like, I think people are so quick to, to discard it and think it would be greener on the other side, and it isn't, people are people. So if you get divorced, and I'm not casting judgment, doing any of that kind of stuff, I'm just talking, um, you know, think, I'll, I'll divorce him because it'll be easier, this person's gonna be better. Well, people are all the same. You're gonna have same issues, maybe, same problems, maybe different issues. You know what I mean? Like, if there's something beautiful about working through. Yeah. I mean, I'm not talking adultery. I'm not talking abuse. I'm not talking all those things he's talking, but just more of like 
oh, I'm, I'm just sick of him, or he gained weight, or he yeah. went bald, or, you know, like those easy yeah. things that people just want to disregard, and it's like... Are these specific reasons? Yeah, you're saying? no. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, it's just, you're going to, if you remarry, you're, there's no guarantee that person's not going to have the same thing, and... So yeah. don't be so quick to just, if it's obviously the main, those big issues, 100%, I'm, if he had a, an affair, I would be gone tomorrow. I would not, I don't think I could forgive him at all. Um, so. Write that one down, yeah. <laughs> but, but the other stuff, like, there's just something beautiful about going through seasons, and there's always seasons in everything. Seasons in your marriage, seasons with friends, seasons with kids. And it's beautiful to go through those seasons because you get stronger on the other end. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's good. I know it's hard to believe, but I can be difficult to live with, I'm sure. Um, That's actually our next question. <laughs> so, what? <laughs> and, you know, in 32 years, we've had times where it just felt like we weren't getting along. We weren't, you know. And the crazy thing is, I'll just be vulnerable right here, why not? Um, it was year 17. Who in the world? Who would have thought year 17 would be a hard year? Here you've gone through year 5, 10, 15, and 17. It was like, oh my gosh, I don't, what did we do? I don't know if I like you. Like this, this, this whole thing and literally went to marriage counseling, all of this kind of stuff. Like, and there was nothing that had even gone on. It was just like something, just the enemy, I think. And it was just like, we literally had to work that out because we just could not get along. And the crazy thing is, like, going through it, our kids never knew, the church didn't, but we knew enough to, let's, we need to get help. Um, so we snuck up to Grand Rapids because that was before counseling you could, was a thing, you know, it was like, oh. Um, but and, tell them we like each other now. But we love each other now. <laughs> but that was just a beautiful, that was a season that we had gone through, that if we had just given up, how sad would that be? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. trying to, to raise yeah. the rest of our kids and marriages and grandkids and all, like, just don't give up, yeah. fight, and yeah. it's so worth it. Yeah, my grandparents were married 70 years before they passed away. And I asked my grandfather uh, in the last couple of years, I'm like, were there ever times that you guys didn't, you know, had hard, difficult times. And he's like, more than I can count. He said, but the answer is you just don't quit. You just, you're, it's not even in your mind that you quit. You just work your way through it. And uh, 70 years is pretty good. I think we should target that. What do you think? Wonder Twin Powers, activate. 